The kids are so young, and they they are not matured enough to protect themselves to make judgment. I think parents should be the first and the last person to help them, yes. and.、Uh, I don't see any point to block parents from the kids and uh, uh, teach the kids to lie to parents and to hide from parents. I think it's it will affect the kids' self confidence and mental health. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Windsor, Ontario. And folks, my original mission here was to cover the parent protest, and there was also a counter protest at the Greater. Essex County District School Board. It's yet another Ontario school board that has gone woke. It's another school board, basically pushing indoctrination over education. But you know something, folks? Don't just don't judge rather all the trustees at this school board with the same brush, because I'm with Linda Kin, and she has taken a stance against the radicalization of the curriculum. And she's paid a bit of a price. She's been demonized, vilified, and bullied. Let's talk to Linda and find out what's going on. So, Linda, first of all, I want to applaud you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us today. Also, there are so many trustees; they just won't give us the time of day. Even those that take a similar stance to you, because they're afraid of more retaliation. First and foremost.、Um, Contrary to your colleagues, as I said in the intro, you are not down with the, I guess, the radicalization going on at your school board. Can you tell me about your, you know, the biggest concerns that you have, Linda? Oh, thank you for your、uh, time for me, and、uh, thank you.、Um, My my concerns is that I think there is something wrong with the current、uh, social system and、uh, especially the education system.、Uh, I think.、Uh, um, now we don't have freedom of speech and.、Uh, Everybody dare not to speak、uh, different opinions, and I, I was the only one in my board who dare to speak、uh, different concerns and opinions, and I would,、uh, I get a lot of concern from parents, and I, I would like to listen to them and have their opinions、uh, reflected in the board meeting. But、uh, other than me, I think.、Uh, Others,、uh, they may not like it. So when I say something different,、uh, I feel I'm always、uh, silenced or、uh, sanctioned. I already got、uh, three complaints, four more complaints towards me in my ward, and、uh, I just feel feel terrible about it. Cause、uh, I told them I'm minority, and uh, please uh, give me, you know,、uh, fair. You know, chance to speak, and uh, uh, give me you know、uh, tolerance tolerance about my language, and listen to to different opinions. But they just don't give me. I, I think the big issues at this school district, it's the board's gender expression policy.、Um, you know, the whole idea of keeping. Gender pronouns. You know, if little Jimmy wants to identify as Jill and go from he him to she her, parents should not be informed about that. And I think、um, that's egregious.、Uh, these are minors; they can't make decisions when it comes to age of majority products, liquor, lottery tickets, cannabis.、Uh, you name it. You have to be a certain age. Why are your fellow trustees? So hell bent on keeping parents in the dark. Actually, I don't understand. Also, yeah, I think、uh, it's a common sense for me that、uh, the 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 kids are so young and they they are not matured enough to protect themselves to make judgment. I think parents should be the first and the last person to help them.、Yes. And.、Uh, I don't see any point to block parents from the kids and uh, uh, teach the kids to lie to parents and to hide from parents. I think it's it will affect the kids' self confidence and mental health. So I I I really don't agree with that. And 
And if we want to protect uh, a certain group, uh, minority kids, we should have better way not to, you know, separate parents from from the from the kids. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a good way. Yeah. And, and you know, from minority to majority, I would argue, uh, Linda, that most parents are on side with you. I know there's one uh, fellow um, uh, trustee, Sarah Kipt, she has said, quote, um, the, the pe sorry, the people that oppose the board's policies are, quote, a very loud vocal minority, end quote. Yet back on June 2nd, during the raising of the pride flag, I understand many schools in the region, it was 75% absentee rates so that seems to suggest to me there's a you know a critical mass of parents that are on your side and are not agreeing with the school board policies it's not a small vocal minority oh yes that's actually what i told them i argued with them many times i said they are not minority group mm -hmm. and they represent a lot of parents because i got a lot of concerns from parents and also and um, no chinese joined that group to protest but i can guarantee most of the chinese they don't agree with what the policy mm -hmm. you know in our board now i made a joke earlier about white supremacists but you look at who is you know comprising these parental protesters, um, it's a multi-faith, uh, multi-racial approach. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I see Asian people, I see black people, brown people, I see uh, Muslims, uh, Jews, Christians, Sikhs, Hindus. Um, the idea that this is one small vocal faction, that's not what I'm seeing when I do cover these protests. You've said you've been bullied at mm -hmm. the board. Can you give me an idea of the bullying? And, and Linda, do you have any allies? Do you have anyone that is supporting you on the board? Uh, I cannot, uh, you know, name the name of okay. the board. And uh, I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm alone. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't get, uh, you know, much help from others except for sanction and uh, complaint to me and, uh, I think there is uh, one uh, trustee might have similar opinion with me, but uh, maybe they're not to, you know, speak out uh, like me. Yeah, but I still appreciate uh, he, she didn't join the sanction to me, you know. <laughs> so, and uh, as for the bully, I can, I don't know what to say. It's intolerable, I think. Uh, in the public meeting, I was silenced without me finishing my words. And they said I made a repetitive motion. I, I was even not given out to speak out. How do they know it's, it's, it's repetitive? It's different. Mm -hmm. And I, I was uh, and. I, I, I was not allowed to speak out. And uh, after that meeting, and I sent them email, I explained, it's, I said, it's different uh, motion, it's not the same. But they told the media that I always break the rules. I'm getting more and more complaints towards me from my board. Mm -hmm. And uh, w whenever I, I try to persuade them to listen to parents, to communicate, I said, uh, uh, what we close the door uh, is not going to help and we need to communicate, listen to them. But uh, even my voice like this is sanctioned, is silenced. So yeah. I don't know how to uh, handle this. And uh, I have uh, three or four uh, complaints towards me I need to respond and they are putting money to investigate it. So I, I don't know. So I It's a vendetta against you, isn't it? Pardon? It's a vendetta. People are purposely trying yeah. to censure you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel terrible. I you you know the feeling when you want to speak something they yeah. they silence you just because you said different. When yeah, so I I hope actually I hope the parents can can you know stand up and speak for themselves because I don't have the have the capability to speak for them because I'm sanctioned. And Linda, I think on the subject of school boards, including your own, banning parents from meetings, banning certain members of the media, 
they are offside according to the Education Act. I'm looking at Section 2071, and it goes on to say the meetings of a board and the meetings of a committee of the board, including a committee of the whole board, shall be open to the public, and no person shall be excluded from a meeting that is open to the public except for improper conduct. So, in other words, if someone is making a scene, causing a disruption, that's one thing. You can exclude that individual, but you can't just have a blanket policy saying, all of you, out. So, they are breaking the Education Act, as far as I can tell. Is there any kind of recourse parents can have regarding this? Uh, actually, uh, I, agree, I agree with you and I agree with the, the parents. And uh, I personally, I feel bad with closing the door. And I always speak for the parents. I yeah. said, there is a reason for them to be angry. And if we respect them from the beginning, they may not, you know, uh, yell in the meeting and uh, suffer this. And, uh, but uh, my feeling is that whenever I want to speak for the parents, I was silenced. And uh, I respect uh, the the school board's decision. That's what's the policy, you know, going on. But I personally, I don't agree with that. And the Education Act would seem to support your view. So the question arises, Linda, where or oh where is the Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, I see so many school boards in Ontario, they are running out of control. Where's the minister? Where's the sheriff to restore order? Uh, actually, uh, the provincial government made a bill, uh, Bill 98. They changed the Education Act and then changed the priority uh, back to the student achievements mm. and uh, instead of EDI. And uh, they especially mentioned that parents' opinions should be respected and we should in encourage parents to get involved with the board meeting and we should provide uh, you know, uh, resources to the parents, include, uh, improve the transparency. Yeah. That's all the, I think it's a good uh, change of the act. Yeah. Uh, in Chinese, we have a saying that things will change if we go too far so mm. that if it go too far so that yeah. means uh if we go extremely you know to a certain way and hurt some you know more and more people people will stand up and speak out so things overall will will change so i that that's that's what i hope yeah fantastic and mm. linda uh, if i can ask you to do me a favor mm. uh we have um a petition here. It's called StopClassroomGrooming.com. Uh, this doesn't apply to you. You're one of the good guys. You're you're a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to present it to you so you can give it to the director of education or anyone else at the school board. We tried yesterday, but they locked the doors. They wouldn't let anyone in. Yeah. And as you can see, thousands and thousands and thousands of names uh, this is the silent majority, I think. These are the people that are saying, stop this indoctrination. If I could kindly give you this document that you could present uh, yeah. to your uh, colleagues, I would greatly appreciate that. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, yeah, I then. I would be glad to, to send them this. Great. Thank yeah. You. My trustee colleagues did ask me, what's your point of repetitively mentioning this? I said, I'm not expecting, you know, any change from me now because uh, I'm so, you know, so small, but I want my voice to, to be out. And I hope other people can echo that. And then bigger and bigger, we can stand up together to make changes. Yeah. Well said, Linda. And you know what, folks, what you're looking at here, mm -hmm. this is a brave woman. This is the face of courage. I have a feeling there are other school board trustees right across uh, uh, Ontario, right across Canada, that feel exactly like Linda does. And what she said is so important. You have to stand up. You have to make your voices known. Otherwise, we will continue to suffer what I call the tyranny of the minority. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Ontario school boards are out of control, as are so many others across our great dominion. 
where are the ministers of education to rein them in? They are sitting this out. But we are amassing a petition demanding action. Go to stopclassroomgrooming.com. That's stopclassroomgrooming.com. Put your name to that petition and we will hand deliver it to the powers that be.